Once again, HTC Vive has created headsets for recreational VR consumers. I've previously owned the original Vive, the Vive OG, and the Vive Pro OG with the lens mod. I also bought the Quest 2 mainly for its portability and ease of travel. However, after hearing various complaints about the XR Elite, I was concerned it might not be a significant upgrade in the quality of gameplay, particularly for PC-based games. For instance, Kayak Mirage on the Quest 2 was a huge disappointment. There was no detail or definition in the scenery, whether I played standalone or through PC VR with a cable. With these experiences in mind, I worried that the XR Elite might also underperform without the video compression of the Vive Pro, especially when running off USB-C. But, I was pleasantly surprised. I've been using VR since consumer headsets became available, and the XR Elite represents a noticeable improvement. The pancake lenses make a significant difference, providing much clearer and more defined images than the Quest 2. The diopters are an added bonus. Despite wearing contacts, I decided to adjust the diopters during setup. I set one eye to two and a half, and everything appeared crystal clear. Although my vision is generally fine, it's a relief to have such clarity in VR. For those experiencing god rays, I recommend adjusting the diopters. Using a cable link, I managed to run Lone Echo smoothly, a feat I could never achieve with the Quest 2. The Quest 2 would drop more frames than it displayed, resulting in a poor visual experience even with a high-quality wired link. On the other hand, the Vive Pro wasn't ideal either because of the screen door effect. However, with the XR Elite, Lone Echo looks fantastic and runs incredibly smoothly. I haven't tried Half-Life, Alex yet, but I'm confident it will perform just as well as Lone Echo, if not better. I'm thrilled that the headset runs all my old Steam programs and revive without any issues. Everything operates seamlessly, making this upgrade a fantastic experience. Stepping into VR with Sony's latest PlayStation VR 2, bundled with Horizon Call of the Mountain, has been a revelation. Coming from a PC VR background, I've been pleasantly surprised by how Sony has leveled up the game with the PS5 and PSVR 2. The setup is a breeze compared to the hoops I used to jump through with my PC setup. Honestly, it's almost like comparing apples to oranges when you look at the ease of getting everything up and running. And the graphics? They're nipping at the heels of the Vive Pro 2, which is saying something. For anyone looking to dip their toes into VR waters, I'd nudge you towards this PS5 and PSVR 2 combo. It's the simplicity and ease of setup that really seals the deal for me. It's as close to plug and play as VR has ever been, but it's not all smooth sailing. There's a bit of a hiccup with the handheld controllers. They occasionally need a reset to play nice with the games. There's a tiny reset button you'll need to prod with a pin on the back of the controller. It's a bit of an annoyance and frankly, something Sony should have ironed out by now. Despite this minor gripe, the overall experience has been stellar. The PlayStation VR 2, paired with the immersive landscapes of Horizon Call of the Mountain, offers an entry into VR that's hard to beat. It's straightforward, hassle-free, and delivers an impressive visual punch that gets you close to the high-end PC VR experience without the usual setup dance. If you've been on the fence about stepping into VR, this bundle might just be your perfect entry point. My previous VR device was the original Oculus Rift. Setting it up required several USB ports on my PC and establishing a specific zone visible to the two infrared sensors. The motion tracking was hit or miss, and the headset would fog up pretty quickly. Recently, I upgraded to the Quest 3, and wow, the advancements in VR technology are astounding. The Quest 3's pass-through feature allows me to move around my entire house and create a large boundary whenever I want. While the clarity isn't perfect, it's certainly usable. Interestingly, the headset recordings you see in videos are much clearer than the actual view you get through the pass-through, but this doesn't affect functionality too much. Performance-wise, the Quest 3 is amazing. I primarily play games directly from the headset, and they run flawlessly. The battery life is another story, it lasts for a couple of hours depending on my activity. To be honest, though, that's about as long as I can comfortably wear it since my forehead starts to ache after a while. There are third-party battery straps that can extend battery life and improve comfort, although I haven't tried them out yet. 
One major improvement is that the lenses never fog up, no matter how intense the gameplay. The audio is also a highlight, coming from small speakers in the strap that direct sound towards your ears. The audio quality is surprisingly good and doesn't disturb those around me. When it comes to gaming via Steam Link, I've only tested it wirelessly so far, using a high-quality router, and it generally works well. I've had a few moments where the quality dips and movement glitches occur, especially when playing Half-Life. Alex, but overall, it's been quite playable. All in all, if you're upgrading from an older VR setup, the Quest 3 is definitely worth it. Looking back, the Quest 2 might have sufficed for my needs, but the enhanced lenses and pass-through feature of the Quest 3 have been fantastic and more useful than I anticipated. It's an excellent device.